Buddy Hackett, I understand that it's really biz biz that brings you to town rather than show biz. It's a real estate business. Uh, we're opening up this uh, San Simeon. It's really open now. And uh, I'm one of the heavy investors in it. Uh -huh. They got one of the, they got some skinny investors too. <laughs> and I just come to see that everything is lovely. It's like a dream come true for me. How is that? Well, when I was a kid in New York and we were really poor, we were always here and then we we're going to get put out on the street or something like that. And I wanted to have a lot of places to live. So now I got a whole bunch of them, you know. And if I, you know, I always wanted to have someplace really beautiful that for a nominal fee, you know, it didn't cost too much, that someone could live in and really be. You know, you didn't have to be a multi-zillionaire to live good. So now, uh, I'm lucky to meet Louis Dorfman and get in. I feel as creative doing this as I do doing anything on the stage or anything. It feels, it's beautiful. And you know that somebody will live someplace and feel good living there. It's like when you tell them something funny and, and they laugh at it. Well, like living in a place like this is like laughing 24 hours a day. It's nice. Do you live in a house or an apartment? And where do you live? I live in the back of a pool room. <laughs> And I sleep on a table, and they rub chalk on my nose to get me up in the morning. <laughs> I live in a great big house in Beverly Hills, California. Big, big house, four rooms. And uh, You mean just four great, great, great big rooms? Yes, but it's not plenty of room because there's only 16 of us. <laughs> you live in a commune, is that what you're saying? <laughs> no, I, know, I, live in a, I live in a modest house in Beverly Hills. It's a nice house. I guess it... And when it was first built, it might have sold for about twenty-seven thousand dollars. But now, with inflated prices in real estate in Beverly Hills, well, you never own it. You know, you put something down, and you live in it, and you pay big interest rates, and they tell you it's deductible. See, and then after you're not doing so hot, you move out, <laughs> and somebody else moves in, and they put something down and pay big interest rates, and. All the time, people moving in and out of those houses. Do you have a lot of fancy, important neighbors? Yeah, the guy next door to me, his name is Zeering. He owns a car wash. <laughs> <laughs> and the other side of me, there's a guy named, what's his name? Uh, oh, I can't think of his name. But he's retired, and he wants to have fun. See? He worked hard all his life, but he's 72 years old now, and he ain't going to have too much fun. And he remodeled his house. He, he modeled his house for a half a million dollars. <laughs> it makes my house look like uh, people keep making deliveries for his house into my house. They, <laughs> they think it's a delivery entrance or something. <laughs> but if he would have been a smart man, this guy, when he was young, he would have found a place like this to live in, see? And then he wouldn't be waiting his whole life to live someplace nice. He would have lived in a place like San Simeon. But I don't know if they had it then. The creativity of Louis Dorfman made this happen. Listen, buddy, outside of a house, if you could have anything in the world you wanted, and money, Shh, and money. <laughs> We're going to go to jail if I grab you here, buddy. And money were no object. Yeah. <laughs> what would you like to have? What would you like to own? Well, I'd never want to own anything. I, wonder, I just want to be able to have uh, health and uh, it's that young fellow's body. I'd like that. <laughs> I'd like a nice slender body like that. I have his body for two weeks. I give it back to him. I wouldn't be worth a damn. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to have health and the ability to continue to make people laugh. That's all I would want. I really didn't, never wanted. Uh, to me, anything that come materialistic is all fringe benefit. What I always wanted was to please people. Buddy, what I'd like to ask you now is, you know, all this Howard Hughes and Clifford Irving thing that's going yeah. on, do you have any opinions on that? I certainly do. I think that Howard Hughes is Clifford Irving, and that he went to uh, Denmark and had a body transplant done, and then he went someplace else, and he had his brain put into his head, and now just want to see what it'll be like, how much trouble he could start, and he's really the same guy. I think that the last day of the trial in court, he's going to pull a zipper at the back of his neck, and the old Howard Hughes will come out. <laughs> we'll be waiting for that. I hope we can be there to film that. Too. I hope so, too. <laughs> Buddy, have you ever made an investment? Now, obviously, this one in Dallas has been good for you, but have you ever made an investment like uranium stock or something no, like that? No, I never bought any nickel stocks, and I never bought any garbage. And I'm a very frugal man. 
The worst thing I ever bought was a kid. You bought a kid? Yeah, I bought a kid from the neighbor. For a neighbor? Or from the neighbor. Oh. oh. Yeah, the neighbor was going away and said, can we leave your kid for a day? I said, I'll buy the kid from you. So I bought the kid from him for $7, and when they came home from their vacation, I sold them for eleven fifty. <laughs> Why didn't you just go to Hertz or a kid or something? I didn't know you could do that. <laughs> Buddy Hackett, this has been an awful well, lot of fun. You pay 11 cents a mile for a kid. <laughs> think about it. Think about it. Okay. <laughs> and Buddy, thank you very much.